The Prime Minister is facing growing pressure to restore funding to the UN relief agency, UNRWA, as a quarter of Gaza's population is estimated to be facing starvation. Anthony Albanese says his government's looking at the range of support that can be given in terms of essential food and other items, including through other means. I spoke to the Shadow Foreign Minister Simon Birmingham a short time ago about the prospect of a return of UNRWA funding from Australia. Well, Kieran, we clearly do see a humanitarian crisis in Gaza and we recognise the immense need that so many individuals have. But we also recognise that the allegations against UNRWA are serious, the concerns about the way it operates are long-standing. And so first and foremost, the Albanese government should be and should have been looking at alternative vehicles to provide support uh, to the Palestinian people in Gaza in need, to make sure that Australian dollars in no way support extremist activities or terrorist activities, but do support the provision of basic food, of basic medicines, of essential supplies and housing supports and the like. And those types of alternatives can and should be looking at other aid organisations that can be supported, as well as now looking at how Australia might partner with the United States in President Biden's push uh, for supplies to come in via a temporary port facility out of Cyprus and the opportunities there to really step up the supply of humanitarian support but do so in a way with absolute confidence about the type of equipment and materials entering Gaza so that none of it could be supporting Hamas or their operatives at all. Isn't the, the fundamental problem here that UNRWA is the, the organisation best equipped? Uh, I know you mentioned the aid agencies, but quite frankly, it, they don't have the same sort of access to the civilian population that UNRWA has done over many years. If, if they can reassure themselves that any links to Hamas have been removed, isn't that the best course of action to refund that UN agency? Kieran, if they look at uh, UNRWA and ultimately make a decision that, uh, that funding through UNRWA can and should be reinstated, there are really both short and medium to longer term issues that need to be addressed. In the short term, Australia should only provide, be providing any money back through UNRWA if it is done with very stringent conditions uh, and clear tests uh, to be able to authenticate and verify that those conditions are being met. There have been calls for the Prime Minister to visit Israel and the areas affected by the October 7 attack, uh, led by Josh Frydenberg, who was there last week. Uh, does this really amount to much, though? What sort of impact would a visit by Anthony Albanese have at the latter stage of this terrible conflict? I think these are important reflections. Uh, the kibbutz that Josh visited uh, is the same uh, that I visited and, uh, and is a, a very moving uh, and indeed uh, you know, quite impactful place to visit uh, given it was the scene of such horrors on October 7. Uh, and whilst we are right to reflect and try to address the humanitarian needs in Gaza at present, none of that should be done in a context without also reflecting on what started this current conflict. There was no conflict in Gaza on October 6, but on October 7, Hamas launched the most brutal of attacks and killed more Jewish people on a single day than at any time since the Holocaust. Uh, and so if Anthony Albanese is able to add to any of his existing overseas commitments, a visit to Israel, to visit those sites that Penny Wong did not visit, uh, such as the kibbutz, uh, such as Sterot, uh, and parts of Israel that were the scene of those attacks, as well as, of course, rightly meeting with uh, those seeking to try to achieve peaceful outcomes in the Palestinian territories, uh, then that can help to demonstrate Australia's support for Israel, support for, ultimately, a long-term settlement that achieves peaceful outcomes for Israelis and Palestinian peoples alike. Uh, but I think for Australia's Jewish communities as well, who have been the subject... Uh, of such an unfair and unacceptable rise in anti-Semitism, to see the Prime Minister take that step of solidarity with Israel in uh, recognition of what occurred on October 7 would be long overdue, but very welcome. Just finally, the Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, has said that Donald Trump 
has told him he won't give Ukraine a penny. So essentially warning that he would defund any support for the Ukrainian resistance. How concerned are you by those comments? Kieran, uh, obviously I'll leave domestic US politics as a matter where we respect the outcome of, uh, of American voters. Uh, but I want to be clear that it would be a mistake for the United States uh, to cease to support Ukraine. It would be a mistake that would have repercussions in terms of the way the United States uh, is viewed around the world and indeed the way in which democratic like-minded nations are viewed around the world. It would only seek uh, to empower uh, autocracies the likes of Vladimir Putin and potentially other nations who uh, do need to have clear deterrence uh, frameworks in place mm. to ensure they don't repeat the type of horrors that we're seeing in Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine is a sovereign country with internationally recognised borders that Russia uh, under Vladimir Putin chose to breach uh, and has caused immense suffering uh, in Ukraine uh, in clear violation of international laws. Uh, and the last thing the world needs is a situation uh, where Putin or others are further empowered at a time of immense global destabilisation from the actions of many other nations as well. The last thing the world needs is to see those types of leaders potentially empowered, uh, thinking they can get away with undertaking the likes of actions that Putin has been responsible for.